Hi everyone, it's Fanola Howard and this is Ask Fanola How and it's episode 17 and it's episode 17 is all about this question which is should I be giving my client a list of everything I have to offer and let them pick or should I recommend? So I've gotten about six or seven of these questions um, over the last, in fact I could honestly say I've had uh, I get this question once or twice every single month, which is about how it's still coming back to the pricing for services. But this one comes from a sense of frustration very often of how it isn't quite working and how you package or you've so much stuff that you don't know where to start. So let me reiterate for you the questions, right? Should I be giving my clients a list of everything I offer and let them pick a la carte? Or should I recommend a package to them based on their revenue level? This particular question from an entrepreneur is because there's a, there was a whole email that supported it and it was expressing a real dissatisfaction about some people picking off one level off of their offerings and expecting, so picking the lowest rate but expecting the highest uh, offering of service and it becomes very frustrating. And the other part of this question was someone who said, um, I don't know what I have to give. What am I giving my clients? Why should they enter a relationship with me? And this came from somebody who was giving away their services for free to get started because they wanted to make a difference in the world and they wanted to change the world. And now they don't know how to go from free to paid because people got all this stuff before for free. And that often happens as well. They got all the stuff before for free, and now how are they going to absolutely how are they going to charge for it so it comes back to this idea of pricing and packaging for services especially when you start out often when you start out you do extra to get clients for the first time and i've been asked this loads of times when someone has done the extra to get the clients and then they get, then people realize how much valuable this is and they keep coming back for more and more and more and then all of a sudden your client list is filled with people that are getting a service that you have over delivered on and you can't keep it up because you'll burn out okay and what often happens that i've seen happen here is you can get very frustrated by it you can start to blame your customer for it and it becomes a very negative space it can become a very negative space it can become a very negative space for the relationship with those clients that got the really good deal at the start, okay? So I want to reframe some of this and help you understand how best to package, okay? Rarely, just to sum up for you, rarely is a la carte the best answer, okay? So let me reframe some stuff for you, okay? So the first thing I want to say to you is, know your customers, the ones you have and the ones you want. So when you start, so if you're starting in business and not understanding about pricing, you've been a bit in business for a while and you're getting confused by all of these customers, this is why it's so important to understand how to profile customers. Really, really important ingredient here. So understand at a certain level that there is a customer at a certain level who can afford you and who will expect a certain level of service or who will expect a certain product at a certain rate and then there may be the customer that you aspire to having. And it may be the customer you aspire to have, but you know you need to get more experience in place or you need to have more in place to actually win that higher level customer. But in this interim period between the customers you have and the customers you want, there can be friction. So we want to become aware of that friction, okay? So the first thing is know the customers you have know the customers you want so we can build a bridge between both of them. And in fact, you could in fact be able to build a journey, which we'll talk about in a second, that allows for both types of customer, okay? So my recommendation here is to start doing a really good customer profile. If you click a link on the bio, you will see there is an article on the How Great Marketing Works site all about how to customer profile, okay? So do that. My next point for you to think about is do not blame your customers for how you priced in the past. Accept it. If you priced at a certain rate and you're still getting customers in at that level, 
then accept it. That was a stage in your journey and just change how you price going forward. But accept the ones that have, you have priced at at that point. Finish the project and move on. If, however, it's not a one-off project or one-off product, then you need to start to reframe that for that customer because it won't make financial sense for you to continue at that rate. This was you at your portfolio building rate. You need to change the relationship. So there you go. One is don't blame them for how you priced in the past. Accept that that's the contract you entered into willingly with those people. And now give no, so now finish the contract, finish the project, finish the product that you sold them. And if it's a recurring thing, renegotiate the contract with new information, okay? Showing all of the value and repositioning it. And that is a very frank conversation that you need to have with your customer. Give them notice, they will accept it. Customers are very reasonable and they have the choice to go elsewhere if that price doesn't fit. And that's okay for you too, because it is okay to say no to the customers that don't fit. Really important, okay? Also resist the temptation to be negative about those customers. I see that a lot. I see, I, and again, that's something that I might meet five or six times a year of blaming the customer, blaming the customer. You know when you're listening to me that you feel you would never do that, but if you're in a negative cycle around what way you're pricing, you will start to feel that. So reframe it, address it immediately, okay? Next thing for you. It's not up to your customers to decide how you solve their problem. So when you move, and this is my point about a la carte, your relationship with your customer is always about helping them solve a problem or address a need that they have. It's not their responsibility to show you, it's not their responsibility how to choose the best way for them to solve that problem with you. That's your role in the sales process. It's your role to guide them of the best thing for them to do. The best package that you can offer them, it's your role to clarify that. If they have to work to work with you, then they'll walk away. So make it easy for them to have a relationship with you, okay? So that's why a la carte is only really good in an a la carte restaurant. It's not appropriate anywhere else, okay? I'm sure somebody is going to tell me there's an exception to that rule. In fact, I'll probably think of one later, but for now, a la carte resides in the restaurant and often very little in that restaurant, by the way. Okay, so what I want you to do instead of thinking about selling an individual product or individual solution to a customer, think of it as a journey. Now we talked about customer journey before and we're coming back there. So I want you to start to think of not selling just one time only, but actually developing a relationship with a customer that is mutually beneficial, where you start by solving the pain and then you move to building the relationship and growing the relationship to move them into a different place. So it can be even as simple as if you're selling them paint, you also sell them the brushes to go with it. So it's, you can use this language interchangeably between products and services. It is always appropriate. So don't think of the single sale. Think of it as a journey. I'll say it again. Do not think of your relationship with your customers as a single sale. Think of it as a journey that you can take together. And so the best course of action for you now then is to think and map ahead that journey that they could take with you. And that's my big exercise for you to walk away with today is to map that product journey for them. So instead of giving them loads and loads of different options, start by knowing them, knowing what they need and knowing what their objectives are at each stage and then creating a product that fits that map. So you sit down and you'll sit down and you'll think, I've done my customer profiles. For this customer, I know step one, they need this solution to solve that problem, and I price that. But I have an opportunity, when they're really happy with that product or service I give them, to give, take them to the next stage. So in the next stage, what's their next objective? Is it that, They've, they've painted the walls on the outside of their house and you've given them their paint and everything else, but do they need something else? What else 
will be the next obvious step for them. Is it that they need um, really nice flint chip around the outside of their house? Is it that they need, you bought, uh, they bought a Christmas present from you for their family? Perhaps now they have a relationship where you supply all their gifts. Or perhaps you're a coach that has helped them solve a problem that they're facing that was a real sticking point for them. When they've solved that, where will you take them next? So step one is what's the pain point that you're helping them with, the problem that you're solving for them? What's their second objective? What's the product you can give to them then to raise them to the next level? And then what is the third product? What is the third objective? What is the next stage after that that you can take them to? It's that whole magic of three and it really, really works. So take a piece of paper. You know, I always like a piece of paper. Write down the three steps, the three states that you can bring your customer to. One is solving the pain point. Two is the next objective. What is that objective? And three is the objective after that. And that allows you to really target customers that can come in at different points and you can take them on a journey. It is much more mutually beneficial for them to have a longer relationship with someone that cares for them. And it's a beneficial relationship for you because it's recurring revenue. It makes much more financial sense for you and for them. Okay, so that's what I'd like to leave you with today. This will help you be more conscious and selective about what you offer because you map what you offer to what they need first and then what they want. And it helps that whole relationship be grow you and them. That's all I have for you today. Have a wonderful day. This is Ask Finola How, and that was episode 17, which was all about, should I be giving my client a list of everything I have to offer and let them pick or should I recommend? The answer is, take them on a journey with you. You recommend what they need because you know best how you can serve them. It's not their responsibility. Have a great day, everyone. Take care.